big volcanic eruptions that alter the climate, revising history of them. This by Anthony Watson, what's up with that? A new method co-developed by University of Maryland refines the 2,600 year history of large eruptions that inject planet cooling particles into the stratosphere. This is from the University of Maryland. Photos taken in 1991 of Mount Pinatumbo, 1991, the Luzon Island in the Philippines, the eruption, the largest on Earth in the past 100 years, ejected particles into the stratosphere more than six miles above the planet's surface. New research uses ice core data to rewrite the past 2,600 years of large stratospheric eruptions like this one. This image was from USGS, David Harlow. Now, for all their disruptive power, most volcanic eruptions are local events. Lava flows tend to reach only a few miles at most, while airborne ash and soot travel a little farther. But occasionally, larger eruptions can launch particles into the stratosphere more than six miles above Earth's surface. The 1991 eruption of Mount Pinatumbo, Philippines, the world's largest eruption in the past 100 years, is a prime example of a stratospheric eruption. When volcanic particles reach the stratosphere, they stay aloft for a long time, reflecting sunlight and temporarily cooling the planet. By understanding the history of these big eruptions, researchers can begin to place short cooling episodes and other discrete climate events into the context of large-scale climate patterns. Researchers working at the University of Maryland, the University Grenoble Alps in France, the École Normale Supérieure in France, and the Tokyo Institute of Technology devised a new, more accurate system for identifying large stratospheric eruptions recorded in the layers of the Antarctic ice cores. Using their method, the researchers made some important revisions to the known history of the big eruptions. We're talking about supervolcanic eruptions. And we have a number of supervolcanoes in the United States alone. We have the Long Valley Caldera in California. We have its neighboring Yellowstone. South of Yellowstone, we have the Valles Caldera. We have uh, the, the uh, northeastern supervolcano recently found. We have other volcanic areas that are new recently found in the United States as well. And we have a number of volcanoes, of course, in Alaska, in the Aleutian Islands. And, of course, we have the hot spot of Hawaii, but that's off the continental United States. But going back to these super eruptions, using their method, researchers made important revisions to the known history of these big eruptions, correcting the record on several misidentified events while discovering a few as yet unknown stratospheric eruptions. The researchers describe their approach, which identifies airborne volcanic particles with a specific chemical signature in a paper published January 28, 2019, just a few days ago, in the journal Nature Communications. Quote, I find it very exciting that we are able to use chemical signals to build a highly accurate record of large, climate-relevant stratospheric eruptions, end quote said James Fakuhar, a professor of geology at University of Maryland and the co-author of the research paper. Quote, this historical record will be highly useful for climate scientists seeking to understand the role of large eruptions in climate oscillations. But there's also the basic marvel of reading a chemical fingerprint that is left behind in the ice, end quote. Eventually, volcanic particles fall from the stratosphere settling on the ground below. When they land on snow, the particles get covered up by more snow that gets compacted into ice. This preserves a record of the eruption that survives until the ice melts. Researchers can drill and retrieve the ice cores in places like Antarctica and Greenland, revealing eruption records that stretch back several thousand years. Because particles from large stratospheric eruptions can spread across the globe before falling to the ground, Previous methods identify stratospheric eruptions by looking for sulfate particle layers in ice from both hemispheres, usually from Antarctica and Greenland. 
if the same layers of sulfate showed up in both cores, deposited at the same time in Earth's history, researchers would conclude that the particles came from the same large stratospheric eruption. Quote, for eruptions that are intense enough to inject material into the stratosphere, there is a telltale signature in the sulfur isotope ratios of sulfate preserved in ancient ice layers, explained Fakuhar, who also has an appointment in University of Maryland's Earth, Science, Earth System Science Interdisciplinary Center. He says, quote, by instead focusing on the distinct sulfur isotope signature, our new method yielded some surprising and useful results. We found that prior reconstructions missed some stratospheric events and falsely identified others, end quote. The study lead author, Elsa Gutier from the University of Grenoble Alps, did a significant portion of the analysis at the University of Maryland, while on a Fulbright scholarship to work with Fakuhar in 2013. Following Gautier's lead, the researchers developed their method using ice cores collected at a remote site in Antarctica called Dome C. One of the highest points on the Antarctic ice sheet, Dome C, is home to ice layers that stretch back nearly 50,000 years. It's almost close to the Valles Caldera eruption and the Long Valley eruption and the Yellowstone eruption, which was around 60,000 to 70,000 years ago. Amazing. Gautier and her colleagues Joel Severino, also at the University of Grenoble Alps, collected ice cores at Dome C that contain records stretching back roughly 2,600 years, covering a large portion of recorded human history. Well, 2,600 years is not that far back, but anyway, let's see what they found. There's a graph here with what their findings are, I'm not going to go into them. The researchers used their method to confirm that many events had indeed been properly identified by the older method of matching up corresponding sulfate layers in ice cores from both hemispheres, but some events, formerly thought to be big stratospheric eruptions, did not have the telltale sulfur isotope signature in their sulfate layers. Instead, the researchers concluded these layers must have been deposited by two or small or more smaller volcanoes that erupted about the same time at high altitudes in both hemispheres. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? Volcanoes erupting about the same time. Well, we see that taking place today, don't we? Especially around the Ring of Fire. There seems to be all these volcanoes going off altogether. Not only that, but we also have Mount Etna going off. Uh, now, the researchers also, and they're expecting a, 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 a huge, anyway, there's a lot of activity going there, but we'll do another video on that because that's not good. It's the most active and lar largest volcano in Europe. Now, that's where Pompeii blew off in 79 AD. Now, the researchers also found some big stratospheric events that contained the isotope signature, but were somehow constrained to the southern hemisphere. Well, we have Australia volcanoes. We have Antarctica. Volc Antarctica has over 100 volcanoes on its own. So this is a strength of our approach because these events would have a climate impact but are missed by other methods, Fakuhar said. We have made a significant improvement in the reconstruction of large stratospheric eruptions that occurred over the past 2,600 years. Large stratospheric eruptions, that's supervolcanoes. Okay? 2,600 years. This is critically important for understanding now, is he saying over the past 2,600 years means that it's about 500 BC. 500 BC. We're already in the year 2019. So if, if they occurred in the past 2,600 years, this was uh, at the limit of 500 BC. Okay, 600 BC. This is critically important, he says, for understanding the role of volcanic eruptions on climate and possibly for understanding certain events in human history, such as widespread famines. It can also help to inform future climate models that will take large uh, volcanic events into account. Now, you remember what happened in Israel, for example. We had a huge famine in Israel, and um, that's when Joseph was uh, taken, sold by his brothers, and he, he was transferred as a slave to Egypt. And a little bit, a few years later, his brothers had to come to Egypt because it was a famine in Israel. 
they went to Egypt to get uh, grain, and they actually stayed there after that. And the, uh, the the tribes of Israel came out of that 450 years later to resettle the promised land. But basically, they had a famine there. Anyway, there's a lot of this going on, isn't there? Now, um, this was publicly released February 5th, 2019, two days ago, the research paper, 2,600 Years of Stratospheric Volcanism Through Sulfate Isotopes, Elsa Gutier, Gio, uh, Joel Severino, Juice Hoke, Joseph Erbland, Nicholas Kalon, and uh, the rest of the group. And we'll, we're very happy that they did come up with this. Uh, and I'm, I'm just uh, astonished that they came out with big, uh, super uh, eruptions that were only about 600 BC. What can I tell you? Uh, we, we find new things every day, don't we, when we're talking about uh, archaeology and history and geology. They all affect mankind, of course. And I'll leave links below for you for this on what's up with that. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.